I had some 10 minutes uh, just before, to st before you know, uh, came up on the stage to speak with uh, Monica, Satkirti, and Jainta here. And hi, Ankit. Hope you're doing well. So Ankit joins us uh, online. So I ha I, Ankit, I know for a long time, and uh, I just had the privilege to speak to them. What I came to understand was that I should not be speaking much given the amount of knowledge these people have about the subject. But nevertheless, I'll try my best. So, you know, I'll, uh, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, so, you know, I'll, 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 I'll start with sharing something, uh, you know, I, from my undergraduate days, you know, back in probably late 80s, uh, you know, India, India was fairly uh, backward in terms of technology and we had failed with the green revolution, uh, you know, uh, experiment. So we wanted to be technologically advanced and uh, USSR, uh, Russia now, was our ally and we looked up towards them. And what they did was, you know, they sent us all the obsolete technology that they had, uh, you know, and, you know, what we called then in our economics was technological dumping. And probably we were set back by another 10 years. And from there, uh, you know, till today, you know, when we are talking about, the, I'm not very fond of, uh, you know, these kind of jargons, but what we are calling it decade, the uh, India's uh, uh, decade, uh, decade for tech. So, you know, it's been a long journey. So very quickly, if I can, you know, start with, uh, you know, Satkirti, you and, you know, uh, how do you see this journey and where are we right now? And then probably we can, uh, very quickly, if you can give your view and then we'll uh, uh, take it ahead. I think, uh, you know, you rightfully said, uh, is this the decade? Yes, of course, it is the decade. And uh, in terms of where we are taking 5G as a technology, I think uh, as an industry, I've been, with Etel for many years and uh, in terms of adoption going from 2G to 3G to 4G and literally shutting down 3G a couple of years ago because it was not relevant for our, I mean, for our country and now moving to 5G. I think today, uh, are we ready? The answer is yes. Uh, but in terms of adoption and uh, the way that we're looking at it, uh, B2B is a lot more uh, clearer in terms of the use cases that is available and how we are able to adopt because as an industry and as uh, today, because 5G actually, you know, evolves around four big pillars. Uh, if you have to talk about it as to what, and it's very highly linked to Industry 4.0 is, you know, IoT, connectivity, uh, cloud, and analytics. These are the four big things that today we sort of, you know, sort of pivot around where we want to do. And uh, bringing this together and using technology and connectivity from 5G is where I think the country is evolving towards and where we as an operator on ISP is also, you know, partnering with other organizations into saying how much that we can go ahead and look at it. Jainta, your first thoughts? Yeah, thanks, Akriti. So, uh, decade, right, which is technology de decade. I think uh, India is in a unique position because we are not only a technology consumer, but we are also a technology producer as well as a technology creator. Our IT services industry is highly rated in the world. Uh, today generates more than $200 billion of uh, revenue. And now because of the focus on Make in India and other economic incentives, we are seeing a strong local ecosystem of technology providers and uh, uh, product companies, right? HFCL being one of them. Now, if you look at uh, HFCL, of course, you know, we are a leading player in, uh, when it comes to optical fiber. But we are also now making a lot of uh, investments, R&D investments in building new products. Our Wi-Fi UBR product uh, has a significant market share in the country today. In fact, we are the number one provider of Wi-Fi UBR in the country today. Uh, we are also investing a lot into 5G. So today, for example, uh, we have two R&D centers, one in Bangalore, one in Gurgaon, and we are investing in building 5G products, uh, which includes FWACP, 5G radio products, and 5G transport products. And the whole idea is how do we work with the other local ecosystem partners to build pre-integrated, pre-validated solutions that can cater to the needs of the India market, as well as serve customers globally. Uh, 
Uh, in this regard, we have set up a 5G lab as a service where we can validate our own products with the products from other ecosystem partners, including applications and solutions that can run on top of a 5G network. Thank you so much, Monica. Thank you. So, you know, I think uh, Satkirti and Jain have already, uh, you know, covered most of the points. So I'll give a different perspective. And it's not that, you know, I don't agree with all of them. I obviously agree this is a plus plus. And this is basically to, you know, kind of uh, comment to Saurabh's point of us, uh, you know, now kind of catching up. How I always see is that technology has always been there, uh, you know, in India. The difference was earlier we used to make in India for the world. Now the difference is we actually innovate, research, design, and then make in India, both for India and the world. So I think it's the other three things which have got added, which is now making a difference. And any technology, and specifically, I think the last few years, we can see there's been literally a technology avalanche, IoT, AI, uh, machine learning, uh, connectivity, all the different type of technologies. Uh, technology is best, uh, is most relevant put to use. What better market than India when we have such a big captive usage ground? So in that regard, I completely agree it's a ticket for us. Great. So everyone agrees here. Ankit, your views, how are you doing in terms of ticket? You've been making a lot of stuff which can help in, you know, achieving those uh, goals and ambitions. Tell us about it a little. Can we put up the sound? Check now. Ankit, can you speak? Let's check. Yeah, I'm, I don't think I'm audible. Yeah, you, you are. Please go ahead. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, morning, Zorab, and uh, my regards to all the panelists. Um, firstly, thank you for having me on this forum. Uh, it's something that I'm personally very excited about. Uh, our chairman, uh, Mr. Neil Agarwal, is, is, is very, very excited about. Um, I would break it into two or three areas. One I think is, is definitely on, on the 5G as, as everyone's spoken. Um, I think it's, it's going to be very exciting, not just from the consumer part, uh, but equally on the, on, the, on the business and the industry implications. Um, that's something that I, I, I feel very deeply that is, is, is very important because there's so many jobs that need to be created in India for, for the future, given the demographics we have. Um, and I feel that manufacturing particularly has to step up in the country um, as, a, as an impact to our, to our GDP. Um, and to make our manufacturing efficient, I think 5G can play a very important role, uh, you know, whether it's M2M, IoT, or any of, of the, the sub-technologies. Um, so I think the work uh, now Airtel is doing and many others are doing uh, to enable uh, industries and, and particularly manufacturing sites, I think will be something very, very important to, to watch out for and, and to enable. Um, I think the government also has to look at very closely how to encourage beyond just the PLI scheme uh, to provide incentives for companies that are becoming more and more efficient operationally um, and also starting to export. Um, at STL itself today, almost 80 to 90 percent of our products are exported. Um, and into more than 100 countries. So I think the, that should be something that uh, government should encourage across manufacturing sectors. Um, I, our own view is that probably uh, we still need to invest uh, significant more in, in the 5G networks in India, uh, you know, especially between Airtel and Jio, uh, to, to really scale up the 5G experience with you know, high bandwidth and low latency. Um, and then probably we'll see about 200 to 50 million subscribers come on board uh, over the next three to four years. So that's something that's, that's very exciting. Um, on the semiconductor part, uh, uh, what we saw is that there's about $80 billion uh, of uh, requirement uh, by 2026. So that's just you know, three to four years away. Um, and, and clearly to, uh, you know, from, from our chairman, there's, there's a real commitment to see how do we reduce that import dependency uh, as a country. Um, which is almost 100% right now, uh, and make India self-reliant and self-dependent on, on semiconductor. 
and eventually then also be able to export our semiconductor globally. So I think that's something that's quite exciting. I think there was a recent announcement also of a partnership between India and US on semiconductor. So I think that's that's a great platform, um, you know, where other countries are also looking to partner with India uh, to develop technologies, uh, you know, including semiconductor. So overall, I, I would agree. I think there's no question in my mind that this is really, um, you know, India's uh, decade. Uh, there's a lot of great tailwinds going for us, uh, but at the same time, I think particularly the private sector in India has to step up uh, both in terms of R&D uh, and, and I would say to some level not be overly reliant on government grants, uh, make yourself uh, you know, strong enough uh, through technology uh, to be able to manufacture efficiently in India and also grow. All right, thank you so much. We'll come to the, I know semiconductor is something we are still exploring. We are at the very nascent stage and the entire, uh, you know, investment space also. But, but uh, you know, staying with you, uh, Ankit, you know, if, uh, uh, you know, I, and I think this question excited you all also, so I'm going to put this to you first, is that, you know, on a scale of 10, if, uh, you know, uh, if I say that India, despite being such a large economy, you know, is still at the romanticism stage when it comes to technology adoption, so what would be your rating and what would, uh, why? So, um, uh, I mean, I think nothing wrong with uh, romanticizing technology, but I think obviously it has to get implemented and execute. Ideas are, are, are not worth half as much as the execution, right? So I think there's no question when you speak to large corporates or small medium enterprises that they want to adapt uh, technologies and then nothing has to be fancy about it. It has to be something that ultimately makes you more efficient helps you serve your customers better um, and, uh, you know, helps serve the economy. I think that's at the core of it. Uh, what we already see is that, you know, whether it's simple uh, things like, you know, SAP transformation moving to SAP HANA, uh, whether it is looking at, uh, you know, cloud adoption, cloud migration, all of these things that we definitely see that there's far, far more interest now uh, from Indian corporates. Uh, the role itself of uh, the chief digital officers becoming fairly standard across organizations. So I think there is a real intent um, uh, to make this happen. I think we're in many forms already leading this uh, from a global perspective. Uh, but I think, you know, we, we do have a massive amount of small and medium enterprise. And I think that's where a lot of work has to happen. And, and equally, the telecom operators like Airtel have to be involved. Uh, companies like Capgemini have to be involved. And, and obviously, uh, you know, partners like us, HFCL and others have to play a role uh, to create that ecosystem where the Indian solutions can be enabled. But ultimately, it starts, you know, from the from the CEO's desk uh, to, to really make sure that this is not just nice to have, but a critical enabler. So I, I, I mean, I would rate us probably at somewhere in the five to six today uh, of the digital adoption. Uh, but I can definitely say there's a strong interest um, and conviction to to accelerate that. Okay, so. He's given a very positive rating to my scale, though he didn't give, it, uh, give a number exactly where he wants to put it. Monica, what, what do you think? Yeah. Okay, so me. So do, I, do you want me to give you a, num a number? Yeah, possibly, because we are all, ex you know, fascinated with CGPAs. So, you know, why not give it a number, possibly, and tell me why. On a scale of 0 to 10? Okay, so uh, I think I'll give a number of 7. And uh, the reason why I'll give a number of 7 is that when it comes to... Uh, you know, idea, our capability of developing uh, technology, uh, even our capability, our, our uh, openness of adopting technology, uh, and, and, and also, uh, uh, you know, the variety of uh, solutions which we can build with technology, all the basic building blocks are there, and which, uh, you know, is, is definitely five plus and hence seven. Uh, the two or three things which still we need to work upon, and which is the 10 minus uh, seven. One, there is a difference in between an idea, a concept, and a commercially ready product slash solution. And that journey we all have to travel. And that journey doesn't happen overnight. There are certain basic inherent prerequisites of that journey, quality, reliability, uh, product life cycle management, and all, which we all have to adhere. Uh, in the rush of trying to be innovative, let us not compromise on that journey and let's ensure that we differentiate between an R&D and an innovation versus a commercially and sustainably deployable product slash solution. Just taking that point a bit forward, if that end 
uh, product slash solution is deployable, it's also very important that is business-wide sustainable. So while when you're developing a solution, the cost sensitivity has to be there, but at the time of deployment, the right price also has to be paid. And that I think is super critical, and this is for all of us as an industry, we are all linked in an ecosystem. If one person starts cutting, the ripple effect happens, the domino effect happens, and somewhere we all need to be fair and have the right price. And the third point in this is, while we are doing the innovation and finding the local solutions, we need to be very cognizant that we are now a globally connected world. And so please be open in taking best practices. Please do not reinvent the wheel. Learn, uh, innovate, adapt, but it should never be an either or. Uh, in the past, we have been very driven in adopting what the others have done, which at times has worked for us and at times hasn't. Let's not the, let us not go to the other extreme where we completely renounce what the world is doing. So that's my rating. Yeah, okay, so you know it's very good because the next two, next two people who are going to answer are the ones who can actually give you another three marks that you have cut. One is Jainta who's producing these products and then uh, you know Satkirti is going to use these products. So tell us how we're going to get, get these three marks back. Okay. So I'll also give a rating, but uh, you know, let me first uh, set a bit of context. I think uh, with the onset of uh, COVID-19, we have seen a lot of technology adoption in India, especially in sectors like uh, retail, e-commerce, uh, banking, finance, healthcare, right? And if you look at the World Global Innovation Index, India has climbed up rapidly in the last uh, few years. We are now ranked 40 in a... Um, list of 132 countries. So, and I think as Indians, all of us need to be really proud of one thing, that three of the largest digital, public digital platform are from India. Uh, whether you take Aadhaar for identity, uh, you take uh, UPI for uh, digital payments, or you take, uh, take uh, COVID for vaccination. So that is a great achievement, I think, as a country, both from uh, usage point of view, as well as from a platform technology point of view. So my rating is, uh, will be a bit higher. It will be 8 out of 10. I think we have some work to do to make uh, technology adoption more inclusive. And we have to leverage uh, di uh, digital technologies, especially AI, cloud native, uh, because the marginal cost of serving a user using digital technologies is very low. So we have digital. to leverage digital technologies to build solutions specific to the country. Very encouraged by a lot of startups outside demonstrating solutions specific to the needs of the country. So I think we can go really be among the top countries in the world when it comes to uh, digital and technology adoption. And I think you can also add ONDC to list because these are all startups sitting here. So you know the three uh, you know, innovations that you said, the world's largest platforms. Absolutely. I think and ONDC is also on the way probably to be the another one. So we can add that to your list. Satkiti, your views. Yeah, I think I'll go with the rating first. And I would also go with the rating of 8 to 10. And uh, the reason behind it is in terms of technology or like, you know, Monica just mentioned about innovation or the ability to actually build our own. That we're very, very good. I think where today the to bridge that 10 is something in terms of the present environment in terms of being conducive to adoption much more faster. Even in terms of doing trials or even in terms of adoption and sort of going ahead with any kind of either be it private net networks or something like that. Today the industries are actually, you know, being collaborative with us and implementing it. But I think getting a commercial use case or trying to get revenue out of it is something that, you know, is going to evolve a little more slowly because everybody is testing waters and we need, just need to say. But in terms of our capability, I think there's no two doubts about the fact that we'll be able to do it. And like we mentioned, I think we are up there, we are looking forward. And I think uh, with the recent concluding MWC, I think one big thing that came up to was that, you know, India is in the middle of all the things that's happening. So I think considering that, uh, Monica was there as a, she, she would be able to add more on that. But I, I think that's the biggest message that we got from there in terms of what we're capable of and where we're heading on that. Great. Okay. So, uh, before we, uh, like, I can go on, but if there's questions from audience, probably I can take it at this point in time. 
because we have another five minutes to wrap this up. Anyone? Any questions? Okay, I don't see any hands right now. Okay, all right. So, you know, uh, you know, just one more question because we are a little, uh, you know, uh, 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 late. So, uh, you know, what's the promise of 5G? You know, you know, we all hear about it and uh, probably, uh, probably at homes there are 5G services. I don't know what the difference has become. Someone says that, you know, latency is good. I don't know how. So, you know, just to, and Sadhguru, I'll stay with you for this question. You know, give us some examples. So tell us that, okay, this is where 5G probably can help you in achieving X or probably how it can, you know, make me go from 7 to 10 in terms of ratings that you're a good teacher, you just give 10 marks, so probably you'll help us understand that. The, the promise of 5G, as in okay, where, where what, what it promises really for a startup community, for us, for normal users, everyone. I think today the use cases that we're looking at is uh, largely in the manufacturing industry uh, and in healthcare and... Uh, Agriculture, these are the three big industries that uh, today we have use cases and we've also tested some of them, which is uh, relevant is, I think I, I would put a lot on healthcare because today India and healthcare, I think it's very, very important that with the technology that we have, I mean, the use case of connected ambulance or, you know, when we were talking to some of our clients uh, from the healthcare uh, industry, they came back today and said that with COVID coming in, it was very important for us to take healthcare to the house. So having an ICU at the home. So what, what 5G would do is what is very, very critical for it is, you know, one in terms of the ambulance case was the golden hour, you know, the one hour after any kind of a trauma happens. And how is it that you can actually get the patient the required care uh, with the experts sitting in a remote location? So that is very important. And second, in terms of having real-time analytics, which 5G will ensure that happens of being the vitals or being anything that in terms of giving the required medication or the treatment bases the vitals and it's very important for us to sort of look at it. I think uh, this is one big use case that we are also putting our money on and our bets on and we're working very closely with the healthcare because that's so much more important and I think we owe it to the country for us to get this entire healthcare system better. On the manufacturing, yes, uh, more so on the beat logistics with the entire drone technology that we're doing, can we do better logistics management? Because, I mean, I also come from an industry where uh, logistics and deployment is very, very crucial for us. And if you're able to predict your inventory, if you're able to know what you need to do, the lead times in terms of ordering and getting the required, you know, just like Toyota does just in time, is so much more important for us. And you'll also save time, money, and the speed to deliver is much more faster. And third thing is obviously, you have a lot of manufacturing use cases in terms of paint quality, in terms of testing quality, et cetera, that today we're all working on, and I think it's all there. And more than then, connected cars is the next big thing, you know, fancy thing that everybody's talking about. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Ankit, uh, over to you for this, you know, final comments on you. You know, 5G, yes, uh, I mean, we, we're experiencing, but you need to work really hard to ensure that, you know, the seamless connectivity is available across the country. You'll have to have the pro products. What are we doing there? Yeah, good question. I'll put it on two parts. One is what's required to enable 5G and then what some of the possible 5G, uh, 5G use cases could be. So I think infrastructure, clearly a lot of work uh, to be done, you know, really hats off to amazing work uh, by the telecom operators so far. Uh, post spectrum, really, uh, we've seen a very large ramp up in terms of fiber deployment, both uh, across the country but also within the cities uh, for you know fiber to the home, uh, fiber to towers, fiber to small cell, etc. So I think that's clearly something uh, that's scaling up, and also equally now fiber to the enterprises. So that's something that uh, we continue to believe will need to get accelerated. Uh, our own view is. Uh, today, India deploys about one twelfth the amount of fiber per year compared to China. Uh, we are about three percent of the world fiber deployment, and you know we are one point four billion people. So clearly, our own view is this needs to be scaled up uh, by at least two x to three x per year. Uh, and again, there probably government needs to incentivize projects like Bharat, Bharat Net, etc. Need to get accelerated to really penetrate uh, rural uh, India with optical fiber. And then obviously it's still extremely challenging to uh, deploy fiber, particularly in our cities. Um, and that's something where clearly the government has to partner 
uh, with private sector, but also with other, uh, you know, uh, the forest department, the railway department, other departments really ensure wherever there is fiber required, uh, that gets accelerated and also incentivized. So I think that's one part from the infrastructure side. Um, I think the other part very clearly is, um, you know, from uh, support, um, I think clearly, uh, you know, I think there is some very interesting use cases that would talk about healthcare. Um, you know, equally, I would say on agriculture side, uh, that would be something very, uh, you know, exciting. Uh, one thing for me personally that, uh, you know, I would love to see my, uh, uh, you know, my mother comes from a village, uh, a cola in Maharashtra, which every year there are, uh, you know, farmers dying because of just heat exhaustion. Um, and I was looking up that automated tractors will be a $6 billion market in the next four to five years. So that would be phenomenal if we could get, you know, Airtel 5G network in some of these villages and then put some automated tractors on, on these farmlands and then the villager could spend more time thinking about how do I maximize the output uh, through real-time pricing and some digital supply chain. So those are things that would be very, very exciting to really ultimately help the common man uh, in India. And again, I think the other part I'm personally very excited about is how can 5G really, really make our, our operations, our supply chain, our logistics far more efficient uh, than it is today. Um, that's something that I'm, I'm very excited about. I know the government wants to implement that at speed. Um, and as, as an industry, we can make that happen. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ankit, and good luck to you. And, you know, I'll just take final comments from Monica and Jainta, and we'll close the session. So, you know, Jainta, your final comments on, you know, this 5G, promise of 5G. Again, you are also one of those who will help to help, you know, Satkirti and uh, so that she can provide seamless 5G to me and all others here. So, you know, what are you, like, what do you think, where are we and what do you think is required for that seamless connectivity of 5G? Right. So, uh, 5G, uh, you know, uh, from a promise of 5G, right, I think one important thing where 5G is different from the previous generation of cellular technologies, including 4G. It is not only for consumer, but it's also for the enterprise and industry verticals. Now, to make 5G successful, a lot of investment is required, right? So monetization of 5G becomes very important, which means we have to build solution, right? Which can be adopted by all the industry verticals, whether it is healthcare, manufacturing, uh, industry 4.0, transportation, right? And to make this happen, there are a few challenges. Uh, one of them is, uh, for example, uh, India is a big country. Okay. So to give 5G coverage to the entire country uh, with a population of more than 1 billion, you need close to anywhere between 200,000 to 300,000 5G cell sites. That means that requires a lot of capex investment. right? So that is one thing we need to keep into consideration. The, and most of the investment there would be on the radio part of the network. Uh, you know, maybe more than 60 to 70 percent would be there. So the question again is if operators have to invest so much in building a 5G network, where is the business case and how do we build the business case? It means that you know, monetization of 5G, both for consumers, enterprise, industry verticals, has to happen. And for that to happen, we have to build uh, solutions specific to the needs of the country. Right? The second challenge that is there is, uh, you know, with respect to fiber penetration. India has very less uh, uh, fiber penetration. Today, only about 35% uh, of the cell sites. Uh, are, have fiber connectivity, which means that uh, and 5G uh, cell sites carry a lot of traffic, almost 10 times more than say a 4G cell site. Uh, 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 average average estimate would be around 10 gigabytes of data a 5G cell site would have to carry. So fiber is definitely uh, one of the uh, solution that is needed for uh, for seamless 5G connectivity. And, and for that, you know, we, HFCL, as a uh, 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 company, we, are, we know that there is going to be a lot of uh, fiber demand, not just in India, but anywhere in the world where 5G rollout is happening. 
So we are scaling up our production capacity in our uh, manufacturing plants in Hyderabad. We are also ensuring that we do backward integration so as to own as much of the supply chain as possible. So for example, for that we are setting up a polymer plant. And also, you know, uh, coming to the lack of fiber penetration while we need more fiber, it is also important that we look at other innovative solutions. So for example, even when for 4G, a uh, lot of the operators here in India, as well as globally, have used the UBR product, unlicensed band radio products from HFCL to backhaul traffic from the cell side. And today we are enhancing our UBR product with uh, 2 by 2, 4 by 4 MIMO technologies, as well as making use of Wi-Fi 7, so that the products are enhanced to carry additional data traffic in terms of 4 to 10 gigabytes of data. So these are some of the ways we are trying to help uh, in the accelerated rollout of 5G in the country. All right. Monica, very quickly, your last comments on in terms of what you think is uh, 5G going to, the way it is going to change life for all of us. So, you know, I, uh, all, mostly everything has been spoken. <clears throat> just to kind of make a point on 5G, I think I'll just leave all of you with that thought. <clears throat> if today I was to ask all of you to just leave your mobile phones and go back to the black <clears throat> wired phones, what would life be for you? Just imagine what a um, wireless connectivity would mean to the enterprise world if today we do away with all the ducting, the cabling, the wiring, and we replace it with wireless technology. That's the promise of 5G. Thank you so much for you know finishing this off on a wonderful note. Uh, thank you so much for everyone for joining us as we as we I kind of understood that you know uh, uh, well begun, uh, long way to go. I hope that CAPEX will not be an issue. People are ready to invest in this technology. Ankit, I, I'm sure that you will manage funds for all this and, uh, you know, Satkirti will also ensure that, you know, we have, you know, you buy those products and, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know give, give this uh, 5G seamlessly to all of us because it seems like it has a lot of promise. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Thank you.